Hi, welcome to Tipsy Tooth Talk. I'm Dr. Carlin Palmer Bloom. And I'm Dr. Michelle Bishop, and I call it T Cubed because I can't say it. Oh, but that was good today. I know, I'm on a roll. <laughs> new year, well, new me, new, new mouth. <laughs> Viva Fiesta! I know! Party with a purpose in San Antonio. If you have never experienced Fiesta, I highly, highly recommend it. It is a super duper fun time. It's 10 days of partying in San Antonio, but the proceeds all go to different charities. Whichever um, philanthropy around town is hosting the event chooses a charity and um, the proceeds go to that. And it's super yeah. fun and it brings the whole city together. And the whole city looks like this. Yes, everywhere. There's like, and I didn't even put out, so this is a little bit of a banner, but it's like a put together banner of, it's called um, Papel Picado, mm -hmm. and it's cut paper. And usually though, you'll see the big, the big rectangles and they're all like beautifully cut. And you'll see like birds or roses in it and then it's all strung along. It's so pretty. I do love Fiesta time. And I have a better Fiesta headband <laughs> that I was supposed to bring from my <laughs> office. <laughs> And I forgot it. So <laughs> what happens at school when you forget your supplies? You get what you get and you don't yep. pitch a fit. <laughs> so um, what I love about this though is since I stand on this yeah, side when we're filming, works. my hair always falls right here and I'm always hating it. <laughs> so um, maybe I need to come up with themed barrettes for every... Um... There you go. Every, <laughs> every episode. And I also don't have on my logo today. Oh. I do have... Yeah, that's very cool. I do have logo matching oh. pants, but they're my new scrubs because oh. I've lost a few pounds. Yes, she has. And to 31. Yeah. Um, Not just a few. So those other scrubs are too big. And that's so a good problem to have. Have I've I got had to get them this. embroidered yet? No. I, okay. Mindy told me I could drop them off one day and I forgot. Oh. Maybe this weekend. Yes. Um, so anyway. That gets us through the decor and, yes, the, and the flower crowns. Mm -hmm. So this is like, you'll see most people wearing like this type of flower crown with a little, what is that? Ribbons off the back end. I don't know. This thing has been around in our house for like easily six, seven years. And my, my ribbons are all like chewed up back here, but it all works. It I all have works. one of those ones that our neighbor or made, the one that does all the wreaths for the neighborhood. Yes. And it's got flat. It's a headband. Next year. Headband. Mm -hmm. And it's got beautiful flowers. Um, I have one of those floating around here somewhere too. And I think they're hiding with the Mardi Gras beads. Uh, <laughs> next year. Next year. <laughs> okay. So today we are doing part two of dentures. So we're talking about conventional dentures. And we're making a margarita. Because it's fiesta time. And in San Antonio when they... Um, so like tomorrow night starts Niosa, which is a night in old San Antonio. And there's a big debate. Is it Niosa or is it Niosa? I go with Niosa, but whatever. I always hear Niosa. Yeah. Um, but my husband and I will go down and work one of the booths. We're at Yakitori Chicken. And um, we like all the proceeds uh, from the Conservation Society all go to different philanthropies throughout the city. So it's really cool. But um, People will be, I mean, throngs of people will be walking through the area and somebody will scream out, Viva Fiesta! And you're supposed to scream back, Viva! So, there you go. If you're ever in San Antonio, you know the proper wordage. And we are going to Corniation, Corniation. which is mm -hmm. pertinent to this because Corniation is what inspired <laughs> us to start Tipsy Tooth It Talk. really was. Corniation is a play on Coronation. Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's, there are these big fiesta queens representing a whole bunch of different things and they have these tens of thousands of dollar oh, gowns that they of wear. Thousands. And, um, so the LBG2, LBGTQ plus community mm -hmm. many years ago created their spoof on coronation and called it corniation. Mm -hmm. And it has, and I don't want to mess up the history of it cause I don't actually know and I didn't I study know. it, but it's, it's morphed over the years and now it's kind of a saturday night live yes. style skit political edgy <laughs> um nice. makes fun of current events um here and everywhere and um it's in a bunch of different groups mm -hmm. um participate so i think I, I think the proceeds might get spread around i'm not sure but i'm quite certain that some of them go to the lgbtq plus community, which um, is near and dear to my heart, um, but it's super funny, and it's and they have hosts. Yes, they have these two hosts <laughs> sitting off to the side, and I'm, 
we were sitting there and I was laughing so hard like I was I was like sweating in the theater because it was so funny and we were laughing so hard and I was like we should be the host we could totally be the host and I've always wanted to be a morning show host like I'm like <laughs> what kind of a great job would it be to sit there and talk to fun people <laughs> with your you know glass of wine mm -hmm. and I was like so between her saying we could do a great job with this and me being like, that's my dream job. Well, and I'd like to be a radio host because I don't want to have to get up and people see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were sitting there with our drinks and we were like, Tink. Yeah. we should be the Hoda and Kathy Lee of dentistry. Yeah. It took us two years, but here we are. But we did it. <laughs> All right, let's make a margarita. Sorry. All right. So we're going to do our glass rims. with. We're going to use tahini. I'm not sure when we rimmed our glasses before that we used tahine. Yes. So I'm going to let you rim your glass. Oh, thanks. Sorry. I'm like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of lime on the rim. And it's so pretty and colorful. Let's see if I can warm there. Okay. Awesome. All right. And so I'm going to ask. Mix. So we're doing kind of a take on a skinny margarita. We're not using a mix. Mm -hmm. um, I did some online research for like reviews of the best margarita and with like, you know, semi-healthy products. <laughs> it's not a mix. It's not loaded with a bunch of preservatives and, okay. um, you know, sugar, extra sugar. So it wanted a Blanco tequila. So this is out of Jalisco, Mexico. And I liked it because it's called Painted Donkey, and my mom loves donkey art. And so I was attracted to it. And then I actually heard it's pretty good tequila. Okay. Um, that works. So we need four ounces of tequila. Okay. That'd be four of these. It's only one count. Oh, that's only one ounce. Yeah, it's only one ounce. Okay. So it's one okay. ounce. <laughs> we know I never remember. <laughs> and then we have our HEB, fresh wow. squeezed lime juice for the cheaters. Because who had time today to squeeze a thousand limes? Not us. <laughs> Three ounces. I'm trying to be extra good about this splashing. Like I always do. Well, like I did last time with the grasshopper and <laughs> okay. everywhere. Threads. Okay. Okay. And then we have two ounces of fresh squeezed orange juice. Again. Also from HEB. All of my HEB. Mm hmm Okay. You said two? Mm-hmm. Two ounces. Oh, you're going right up to the rim on this one. And two teaspoons of agave nectar from Central Market. Which is the Whole Foods? Blah, blah. Now I can't talk. <laughs> Which is the Whole Foods version of HEB? Yes. <laughs> okay. Two teaspoons. Perfect. We should get sponsored by HEB. I know, right? I think we talk about them every week. <laughs> Come on, HEB. Show up. Well, you know, we never tag them. Let's tag them. I do sometimes. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, my shaky shakiness. Viva Fiesta! Viva! <laughs> okay, well, we'll work on that for later. Before we go to Corny Asia. I did not have a cocktail before coming. Me neither. I needed one today. I'm tired like I have. We're filming after work today. Yeah. We usually film when we haven't been working. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I forgot. Well, I always forget some things. <laughs> Let's not pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, I kind of forgot what we were talking about until about 10, 15 minutes ago. I was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me review, review those uh, notes in my mind. She was in charge. I was in charge of the drink today. Okay. Shake it all out. Might as well. Just let's get it done. Okay. Perfect. Ooh. Look at that. I almost got a perfect pour Ooh, for once. Look in there. For once. Mmm. Ah. Smells good. I oh. smell it. <laughs> no, you're the cheater, not me. <laughs> Cheers to beautiful smiles. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm good with that. That's it's good. pretty good. 
A little more orange juice probably would have made it a little sweeter. Yeah. I'm but, okay with it though. Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. Let me let me just take one more sip to be sure. <laughs> I'm gonna get my talking juices going. <laughs> she had a rough day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. okay. Happy with that. Okay. So last time we talked about partial dentures. So not missing all the teeth in one arch, upper or lower. Um, but just missing some teeth and how we can replace those. So now we're going to start part one of what I call conventional dentures. So when I talk to patients and they're getting ready to lose all of their teeth, either on the top or on the bottom, um, they ask, well, what are my options? Well, conventional dentures, which we're getting ready to talk about, implant retained dentures, and those implant retained dentures can come in a couple different forms. So today we're just going to talk about conventional dentures, no implants involved, um, and I have a small example here. And I realize, you know, watching some of our videos, I get that you can't really see this up close. This is supposed to be more for an informational um, type thing. But conventional dentures is a big piece of plastic with all the teeth on it. And um, when I talk to people about this, this is a big, a big adjustment or a big leap for people. So partials, I feel like, are great because... You still have some of your own teeth and if you think about it when you bite together with your own teeth you have I can't ever say it well proprioception <laughs> meaning you can feel your teeth in their space and you can feel them moving you know even though they're not tech hopefully they're not <laughs> technically moving but you can cut you you know where they're at in your in your mouth proprioception is how you know where your body is in space, space. and what it's doing Right. Um, you know, it's kind of an abstract thought, but it that's is. what it is. Yeah. Have a margarita and think about that. <laughs> okay. So dentures though, you don't get that sensation, right? Because you've got plastic teeth and they're, um, all made out of plastic these days. And maybe like 20 years ago, they were still being made out of porcelain. Um, were they porcelain when we were in middle school? They were, they were, they they were, were switching over to plastic. Plastic was new. Plastic was new. Yeah. So porcelain was, was the old thing. Porcelain's beautiful, um, but they really wear down your own teeth. If you have teeth that are hitting against them, then that porcelain really wears them down. So anyway, the, the switch has been made to plastic. So you've got a big piece of plastic in your mouth. And I just want you to think about that for a second because... Um, if you ever went through braces and you wore that retainer or you've been through clear aligner therapy braces with the you know clear retainers you know or you've worn a night guard or an athletic guard you know what it feels like that oh something's in my mouth okay well now you've just replaced all your teeth with a big piece of plastic I'm not trying to beat up on it just trying to give you the the idea that it's a huge shift from your own teeth which is why we say all the time or I say all the time Nothing's better than what you were born with. Like, I don't care how far we've come, it's 2022, nothing is better than what you were born with. And so anytime we can save something or most of what you have, it's a better option. But if we can't and we're here, then let's talk about how to make the best of this. So <clears throat> I feel that the best dentures are made after the teeth are removed and you've had some healing time that's gonna get you the best fit. However, cosmetically, most people don't wanna run around without teeth for a few weeks, maybe even six weeks to two, you know, two months uh, while you're healing. Um, so there are different ways to make conventional dentures. And so if we know that we're gonna be losing the teeth, we can take impressions before time or a scan and have the dentures made before the teeth even come out. That is called an immediate denture. So the teeth come out, we immediately put the denture in. Um, that has a little bit of a margin of error because we have to kind of guess where, when the teeth come out, what that bone's gonna look like after the teeth come out. And we've gotta try and replicate that in the denture. Um, we also don't get the opportunity to see what it looks like in your mouth before it's finished. And I'll kind of go through that. So immediate dentures, um, are great because we're not leaving you walking around without teeth. With the caveat, I always tell my patients knowing this is probably not your final denture. This is gonna get you through the hump of healing. We're probably gonna to have to reline it, meaning uh, 
put a whole new inside on the inside here, rebase it um, after you've healed sufficiently, probably at, I give it at least 90 to 120 days um, to get the best fit. And it may be frustrating um, during that time. The, um, and the other thing too is, you know, if you don't like the color, the shape, the size of your teeth, we're kind of already done with it. Um, if we're not able to rebase it or reline it, or you just don't like the color, shape, or size, we have to start all over once the healing is complete. And so that can be frustrating um, for patients because now they've paid for an immediate denture and then they have to pay for, you know, their final denture. Um, but people that, that are going into an immediate denture, I try to have that conversation well before we start anything. Like that's a, that's a sit down, let's just talk, let's answer all the questions so that there's no miscommunication or failed expectations once we're already taking teeth out because that's the last time we want, you know, that's the worst time to have a conversation um, is when we're taking teeth out or trying to deliver a denture and then we fail to meet the expectations. Um, because expectations minus reality always equals conflict. Unless you set that reality up to equal those expectations or you set the expectations to equal the reality. <laughs> so, Sounds like a math problem. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so immediate dentures. Take the teeth out, immediately put those dentures in, and you'll probably have to have it relined or a whole new one made, you know, six months, a year down the line to get the best aesthetic cosmetic result for you. The other option is to have the teeth removed, um, or I have people come in that, you know, have already had dentures and they're um, worn down or broken or not fitting well, or they've you know lost teeth over a period of time and we just have one tooth that's remaining or two teeth, I mean, it happens. And then we're able to go through the step-by-step -step process with them. And so that step-by-step -step process is, again, taking our initial scan or impression that goes off to the lab, it comes back with a big old pink piece of wax that we try in we get measurements, we have you bite, we make sure your lips and your profile look good. We send that back to the lab and then they actually send it back with all the teeth set in wax so that we can try that in. And you can bite together and make sure that your bite feels good and that you're able to look in a mirror and say, oh yeah, I like the color, the shape, the size. And if there's, and we encourage people to bring somebody with them because you don't look at yourself every day as much as your loved one might, right? So your spouse, your children, siblings, parents, um, you know, people that are looking at you, um, we encourage people to, to bring someone with them to give them some feedback on that. And then if everything looks good at that, it goes back to the lab and is finally finished. And bring your harshest critic. Yes. I mean, it's frustrating to have to redo it or whatever. It's way We easier. want you to come and like it, but bring your harshest critic because that's the first person you're going to go to after you get your final product. Mm -hmm. And it's better to know when you can change it than when you can't. Right. <laughs> so if you're going through the process and you have the opportunity to do the wax to try and like, I, I never even flinch when someone says, I don't like this. I don't like the color. Great. Let's fix it. I can fix it right now. If you were like, mm, well, it's, it's fine. Uh, you know, and then at the next visit, when it's finished, you're like, you know, I really don't like it. My hands are tied. We're done. Can't fix it. Um, so the other thing I talk to patients about is um, there's a big difference between upper dentures and lower dentures. Amen. A lot. Big, 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 big difference. So upper dentures, most people adapt really, really well to it. Um, it stays in fairly well, which you wouldn't even think it'd be the opposite just because of gravity. Uh, but upper dentures um, create a great suction. That's how conventional dentures stay in place. And um, the tissue on top is a little thicker and not as easily irritated. Um, and a lot of people are, I think, more willing to get through the frustrating learning phase with an upper denture because they want their front teeth back. They want their smile. The lower denture, this guy, our nemesis, is very hard to get used to in a conventional denture, meaning you've got nothing holding it in place. Because it's not so much that it doesn't stay in place, right, it stays in place, but our tongue, if you take a moment and you start talking and you think about where your tongue is, your tongue is a huge muscle pushing against your teeth. Well, if it's pushing against a denture on the bottom that's just sitting on top of your gums, 
well, it's gonna push that denture around and it is super frustrating for people. And when you eat, we don't, we eat with our teeth, but our tongue also moves the food. Well, now it's moving the denture and you're trying to get that denture to line up and chew. There are probably more dentures sitting in bedside table drawers, lower dentures sitting in bedside table drawers um, than there are in people's mouths. I mean, like I'd almost bet on that one. Yeah. Um, because the, the learning curve on it is big and the willingness to go through the learning curve is small. Yeah. And they're, Right, you know when it hurts when you get an X-ray from, mm -hmm. from for like right down here. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That's where it hurts. A lot of us are bumpy down there. There's something called a torus or tori. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are bumpy down there. The floor of your mouth is is kind of sensitive and very thin. And so um, the same thing that bothers you when you bite down to get your X-rays at the dentist, you got that sitting there nonstop. Now of course it's a lot thinner and mm -hmm. it's contoured to fit you and all those things, but it's it is certainly an annoyance it is so there are things so again immediate dentures conventional dentures um, both you know you'll end up with it with an end result that hopefully you're using and um, and it feels good but I tell people there's a process um, after I deliver the denture and I tell them before I deliver it um, the appointment before um, you're gonna have some sore spots. It's gonna rub you. You're gonna feel like you can't eat. You're gonna feel like you're gagging because you've got so much saliva in your mouth. These are all things I want them to hear before I actually give them the denture. And then finally, you know, dentures are just like um, night guards or athletic guards. You don't wanna be using toothpaste on them. They actually have toothpaste now that's made for dentures, that's not abrasive. They have the denture soak. The one thing I will say about the soak is you still have to brush them. You can't just <laughs> soak them. You gotta get the stuff you off. You gotta get the stuff off and then you soak. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have a soaking denture with hardened stuff on it. Mm. Yeah, mm. seen it, mm. seen it all the time, <laughs> seen it all the time. So that's a little bit about conventional dentures. What did I miss on that? Do you remember anything? So immediate. Still have some teeth, but we're moving towards dentures, so we're taking them all out. We're not, you know, letting you run around, run around without teeth, but knowing that that's probably not your final product. And then if you've already lost the teeth or you're just having a denture remade, then we go through the steps. I'm going to add one more thing about especially people that have worn dentures for um, a long period of time. The new dentures will never, ever feel like your old dentures. <laughs> Never ever, not in a million years, it doesn't matter how much you pay for them, they're not gonna feel the same. And it's just, quite honestly, it's different material that we're using these days. Um, and you can't, you, you just can't replicate it. And that's frustrating for, for patients and, and for us because we're trying so hard to make it comfortable for you. Um, but it's, it's gonna be different, so. Yeah, and we make it sound like it's not fun, but you know what, if you need them, you need them. If that's what's the best thing for you, for aesthetics and budget and, and all the things, and it's what's best for you. But the, the best thing that we can do, like she was saying, is set expectations. Because if you know what the frustrations are and then you still accept it, then you're very likely to be happy with your result, right? Um, and this is beautiful. If, if she's got a lab that makes a denture that looks like this, then wow, that's fantastic. Well, and I will say some of my, some of my happiest cases um, have been denture patients because those are typically people that have, that, you know, have lost their teeth through, through different circumstances and it's, it's depressing not to have your smile. And yes, you can do the big glam smile makeover with the veneers, but, but you know, those people are just trying to improve their cosmetics. These people are actually trying to get back function of life you know, trying to get something back to chew with. And so it's super rewarding when you can deliver that to somebody. Those have been some of my biggest tears on my own, just being so happy that I was able to do that for someone. I still remember my denture patient from dental school. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would recognize him if I saw him on the street. Yeah. I mean, we, we bonded. Although in dental school, you see him 77 times <laughs> before they get to the dental. <laughs> True. Hey, one thing I noticed, you have cascarones here. I know. And I'm not gonna make a mess in your house, although I did think about it. <laughs> I was like, ooh, y'all probably saw me, I spotted them. So these we crack, you, you, yeah, 
You go and you crack them over people's head and like that. Oh, she made a mess in her own house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl. Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. Cheers to beautiful Cheers smiles. To beautiful smiles. <laughs>